Hello world, today's video is about code reusability. We will see how it can be the key to build easy to scale applications, but also what are the common problems when reusing code. So stay around for the next minutes to learn more about this important topic. I've added some timestamp in the video description, so feel free to jump ahead to any section if you want to. So what is code reusability? Well, as the name implies, it refers to any technique that allows the reuse of code across the software system. The reusability of code within an application can take multiple forms, like components, libraries, classes, services. But the underlying idea remains the same. You grab lines of code once, then reuse them somewhere else. The most basic form of code reusability would be to copy and paste a block from file to file. That doesn't sound too great, right? But still, this is the base of re reusability. So let's see other ways to reuse code. I like to start with object-oriented programming, as I think of it as a paradigm based on reusability. Object-oriented programming is based on, well, objects. Objects are classes which contain properties and methods defined by an interface. The code reusability lies in writing a class once and then creating object instances and reuse them across your codebase. Back in the origins of object-oriented programming, it was thought that once an object was defined, it wouldn't need to be recoded ever again. Developers thought that programming was over once all objects in the real world were transcoded into class objects. However, this hasn't been the case. Even though there are thousands of applications that, for example, work with users' classes, they all handle users differently and with their own custom methods. This makes the reuse of a single class very unlikely to work for every developer in the world. This leads us to the next code reusability technique, components. The evolution to object reusability is the concept of component reusability. A component is a unit that can be reused or replaced. The syntax of a component varies based on the programming language you use, but classes and functions are the most common types. If we follow the catalysis approach, there are some requirements for a component to be reused. First, high cohesion. This means the internal methods and properties of a component should have a strong relation between them. Then low coupling with the rest of the system. A component should not care about the environment where it is being used. A well-defined interface. This allows for external elements to know how to interact with the component. Finally, it should be an abstraction of a well-defined concept. Components should follow the single responsibility rule and not handle multiple unrelated concepts. As an example, if we look at the modern and common front-end frameworks, they, they are all based on component design patterns. The ability to customize how a component looks like is also key to code reusability. When components accept inputs from the outside, they will be able to dynamically change their behavior without the need of rewriting the logic. Building components should not be a hurried process. It is advised to take your time to plan the designs of each of your components carefully. That is the key to success. So, the next step on our reusability journey are libraries. Libraries are one of the oldest forms of code reusability, dating back to early 1951 for a creation of a calculator. Since then, programming libraries have been evolving and you can find them almost everywhere. Libraries can be open source or keep their internal working hidden behind compiled files. Libraries allow you to delegate the processing of logic to an external module. You can then import the library from multiple projects, thus accomplishing code reusability. As developers, we find ourselves using libraries all the time. In Python, for example, if you want to manipulate date and time, we import the date and time module and then access to their internal methods, such as getting the current local date. Or in Node.js, if you want to execute a shell command from our JS files, we first need to import the child process module. 
and then use the x run to run a command. Similarly, if we want to use some logic provided by React, such as their hooks, we first need to import the library. This allows us to benefit from the library's hook logic without having to reinvent the wheel. As we have seen in those examples, libraries are extensively used as a way to reuse logic. The most successful code libraries tend to be small and fulfilling a well-designed purpose, rather than trying to satisfy multiple needs. Libraries need to have a well-documented API so the reusability can be done without direct access to the source code. Now that we have seen the most common techniques to reuse code, let's review the pros and cons. The main pros are, you have to write less code. You have a better readability of your code, because blocks of code are centralized. They become smaller and easier to read. It also improves the code structure. Less duplicated code reduces inconsistency and also redundancy. Another benefit as well is the reduction of testing efforts, as centralized code can, ma can be managed by its own unique testing and there's no need for having duplicate test cases. As everything in life, there are also cons. For example, a reusable object tends to be larger than a non-reusable one. This is due to the fact that reusable objects need to be able to react to multiple situations, whereas non-reusable objects are written with the abilities to satisfy the current need. Also, a simple change on a component library will have an impact to all elements that are using the library or the component. To end the video, I would like to cover a new concept I found while doing research on this topic, and that is reusable knowledge. Due to difficulties attached to code reusability, the reuse of knowledge concept is being actively researched. The idea is simple. Instead of reusing lines of code, what is being reused is the knowledge on how to build a system taking into account past experiences. The concept lies in capturing knowledge from building a software system and applying it on future developments. Documentation is key to this type of reusability as it needs to capture knowledge but also experiences. The code reusability journey is far from over and I'm sure it is an exciting topic to follow in the coming years. So what is your opinion on this topic? I would like to get your feedback, so feel free to leave a comment and share your experiences. Maybe there's a technique you know that is worth mentioning. I hope you learned something new and I will see you around.